Hi everybody, my name is Dave Marsh. I'd like to welcome you to this Matrix Input Tutorial. And today we're gonna to take a look at how to add and edit a listing in Matrix. Now before I begin, I'd first like to mention that because each MLS may have slightly different requirements, the system that we'll be using during this tutorial may differ slightly from the one that you're currently working with. Nevertheless, the functionality is the same. And for the most part, whatever you see during this tutorial, you'll easily recognize in your own system. All right, so let's begin by adding a brand new listing to the system. And we'll do this by accessing the listing management section. And this is an area where, as the name suggests, we can manage all of our existing listings or add a new one. So for this example, I'm going to choose to add a new residential property. And from here, you'll notice that I'm able to begin my listing by either partially filling from an existing property or by starting it from scratch. But again, for this example, we'll start by using an existing property, which we can identify with either the property's address, the listing number, or the APN. And regardless of which method you choose, with our property now selected, this is where we can initially verify that the map marker is in the correct position. And this is important so that it falls within the specified area of anyone doing a map-based search using the map shape tools. Now to readjust the marker, it often helps to zoom in or out of the map that you're viewing, or even switch to a satellite view before dragging the marker to a new position. As an alternative, you also have the option of entering the exact geo coordinates, as well as reverting the marker to its original location in case you'd like to reset. Next, we're going to choose how to partially fill our form, either from the property's tax record or from the previously selected listing. Then select Continue. All right, so now from the Editors tab, we're going to continue the process by adding any additional optional and required fields. And this is the same page that we would have started from had I previously chosen to begin with a blank input form instead. But because we started from an existing listing, we can now see that many of the fields have already been filled. Now it's important to note that by default, all new listings automatically start with an incomplete status. And this makes it easy to save it at any time to come back to you later. But before we do that, one thing to note is that in some systems, listings are saved as incomplete using a button rather than it being selected as a status. So let's go ahead and save this listing as incomplete so that we can return to it at a later time. All right, so now that we're back in the listings manager section, we're going to assume that it's later and continue with our listing. To do this, we can either select to return to the input form from the actions menu or directly from the edit button. And you'll recognize this form is the same one that we left a few moments ago, but this time I'm going to switch the status to active with the intention of eventually submitting it to live. And you notice that when I do this, we see tags representing the total number of required fields before I can submit the listing, as well as exactly where the fields are located. And again, if we're only interested in viewing the fields that are required, we can toggle on the required filter. But for this example, we're going to display everything. Now there are a couple of different methods that we can choose to fill our fields. The first is to navigate to the specific sections of the form. And this is useful if you want to quickly access one or more of the fields without having to scroll through the entire list. In addition to that, by selecting the required fields tag, it will take me directly to the first field that's required in that section. Now, the second way to fill our form is for keyboard enthusiasts who prefer to tab through each of the fields individually. And you'll notice that when I do this, my mouse remains stationary, and I simply need to use my arrow and my enter keys to select from the available options. All right, so quickly moving through some of the fields, let's pause here to ensure that the map marker is in the correct position. And if you started your form from scratch, then this is where you'll add the address. And just like before, move the marker to a new position if it's not in the right location. All right, so continuing with our form, I'm going to quickly fill out all of the mandatory plus any remaining optional fields. And while this is being done, let's quickly review what we've learned. All new listings begin with an incomplete status and will only show the required fields to save as incomplete. Switching your listing to active, however, will show all of the required fields to submit your listing as live. 
And finally, if you want to hide all of the optional fields, simply select the required filter to show only the fields that are mandatory. All right, so now that all of our fields have been added, we're now ready to add some property photos. And we'll do this either by dragging them directly onto the page from a folder, or for this example, browsing for the images on our system. All right, so now that our images are loaded, you'll notice a warning that just lets me know that some of our images are lower than expected resolution. But because I'm okay with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and rearrange the photos by dragging the exterior shot into the primary photo position. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and make this photo permanent. Or in other words, this will be the photo that remains visible to the public when the listing goes off market. And for systems with photo AI enabled, you'll notice that Matrix has auto-generated a photo description as well as the category that the photo belongs to. But of course, even though this is done with astonishing accuracy, you'll still want to review each of the categories and their descriptions individually. And finally, if you need to manage a collection of photos, you can either select the images individually or from the Actions button, select them all, unselect your selected, export your selected, or delete your selected. All right, so in this final section, we're going to add our listing documents. And I'll begin by adding a document description, followed by the type of document, and then set the privacy. And this is a status that determines the document's visibility. For example, when I set to private, this document will only be visible to authorized users, typically within the matrix system, while the property is on or off the market. And when a document's made conditional, it's essentially visible to the public while the property is on the market, and then automatically transitions to private once the property goes off the market. And finally, as the name suggests, when a document's set to public, it remains visible to the public in their portal and other third-party applications, whether the property is on the market or off. Next, I'm going to choose the document and then upload. Now at this point, I can either continue adding more documents or edit the existing ones. So let's go ahead and change the privacy status, this time to conditional. Now, if you'd like to manage a group of documents, you can do that from the Actions button, as well as filter the documents by their privacy settings. All right, well, this concludes this input tutorial. I'd like to thank you for watching and hope that you can join me for another session. Take care.